Hi, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my channel if you're new and a big warm hello to my subscribers. I love you guys. Today I am bringing you beautiful tiered tray DIYs for Easter and spring. And as always, I hope you enjoy the show. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. And this video today is a collaboration video with the extremely talented and very creative and very good friend of mine, Jackie from Blessed Beyond Measure. We got together to make all these tear tray little DIYs happen. And you don't have to use them just for tear trays. I mean, you can put them on little shelves, you can put them on a farmhouse hutch, they can go anywhere, but we get a lot of requests for the tiered tray decor, so we're bringing it to you today. The link to her video, which is part two, will be located down below in my description box, as well as at the end of this video. Just click on her channel icon. It will take you to her channel and look for the thumbnail that looks like mine, and you will find Jackie's part two. So this is my inspiration piece off of Pinterest that I saw last year and I fell in love with this you guys and I think it's because of all the grooves and texture that it has. It's not made from like a factory cookie press type situation. I think that was very homemade and the wood was left more, you know, in its natural state. So the Dollar Tree bird houses are smooth and factory made and sanded you know so i'm using spackling on top of this to try and bring back that wild wood look so this i'm just going to take a craft stick apply it like frosting and then instead of trying to smooth out all of those lines i'm going to try and recreate grooves and looks of bark and grain you know i guess like chopped wood like firewood now if I, I know that I can't get it identical because, you know, this is the Dollar Tree birdhouse, but if I can even just capture the energy, which I do think I succeed at doing, I'm very happy with it at the end, then I'm happy. And it's, you know, a lot of these are inspiration crafts, of course, so they're not going to be identical, but if you can catch the same energy, the feeling that a craft gives you when you look at it, that joy that you get you've hit your mark, at least for me. It doesn't have to be identical, but if it brings me joy when I look at it the same way the photo did, I know that I'm on target. So after the spackling dries, the next day, I go ahead and give it a coat of white acrylic paint just to give it a little more structure and protection so that the spackling doesn't crumble off. And now I'm just taking some of the darker gray called Pavement from Apple Barrel and I'm dry brushing it on to accentuate those grooves but I know that I need to smear it and make it look kind of hazy and cloudy and grayish and you know just like the picture it wasn't a totally clean white paint it looked like it was dirty so I'm using a wet sponge oh my gosh you guys I need to get a new sponge that's looking pretty tatty isn't it <laughs> but it works it does the job it, it does a lot of scrubbing I'll tell you to clean the surfaces where I craft but that's what I'm going to do and now I'm applying the wax is you can use any wax for this it's an antiquing wax it's brown and I'm going to lightly do the same thing with the sponge just purposely smear it so that you get a little bit of the like a stain almost everywhere and then I'm gonna you'll see me in a bit I will go over to accentuate all of the design that I put in there that I don't want to lose either this is just the starting point yeah and that's what we have now we're just going around the hole there to accentuate that make it look dirty we're just doing our distressing and our normal you know making things look rustic and kind of you know earthy and pretty and I decide to I want that little sign now on the original piece it's a sign that's hanging off of the little wood pole that the bird would sit on but I don't have that option because it would be too low to the ground mine is you know the Dollar Tree one is lower down so I'm going to go ahead and put it up on the rooftop but I think it still comes up super super cute and speaking of surfaces to craft on you guys I discovered floor tile oh my gosh it's amazing everything comes off a of floor tile you just take a razor blade even super glue E6000, I mean, everything comes off. It is a wonderful, you know, I just felt bad wasting so much craft paper because I kept pulling out tons of butcher paper and craft paper and throwing it away. And anyway, I'm so impressed. I ordered a 32 by 32 inch porcelain, huge crafting 
tile to use in upcoming videos as my complete crafting tabletop because they are so durable and wonderful for crafting and you can paint directly on them and just wipe them off and it's all good. So you saw how I deliberately cut that craft stick crooked. I edged it with a bit of brown paint little bit of that blue paint I just kind of dry brushed it and scribbled it on there wrote the word Easter I don't have the best handwriting sorry you guys but I wanted it to look homemade so it's all good and that's it and I love this This little guy is just the classic Dollar Tree Easter item that you find at most Dollar Trees. And I know there's somebody out there pulling their hair out because he's never come to their Dollar Tree. But most Dollar Trees do have this little ceramic bunny. And he literally just shouts tear tray decor when you walk by him. He just needs a little bit of painting. That's actually how he sold. He sold with a little paint kit at the bottom. It's super cheap, nasty paint. But you can use uh, obviously more expensive paint. Last year I did a really soft version, but I looked at him this year and I thought, you know, we're going to move you. We're going to put you, he was packed away for Easter, but we're going to put him on the tiered tray this year. And we're going to make him more modern and more pronounced, I guess have more personality and more character. I started off painting him white with acrylic paint. Last year I just left him, you know, in his natural ceramic state. But this year I wanted him painted. I did decide to leave his ears pink, but we're just using a fine tip black Sharpie pen to give this little guy some personality. For this DIY, you're going to need one of these little wooden square pictures and three carrots from the Dollar Tree. This is some little oh, vine that I got at Hobby Lobby. It's like a t eight foot wrapped vine, I think, of little tiny mini leaves. And I thought it would be perfect for mini crafts. So I snatched that up. And I'm starting off by giving this one coat of white acrylic paint. I don't have a lot of white but honestly it is a very beautiful farmhouse look and I don't have a lot of it and I think it's especially appropriate for Easter time so I was really looking forward to getting white paint happy here and slapping white paint on everything because it's a very you know it's springtime so it's a nice light bright clean look now I decided to pull out the I don't know the raffia that comes out of those carrots because it's kind of cheap and nasty and it's super easy to do because it's styrofoam and you just poke whatever kind of greenery you want down the center and voila you have much more expensive looking greenery coming out of your carrots I mean it really just notches it up to a very you know a more expensive look really easily so take the time to do that if you can you guys because it does make a difference and now I'm just drawing my little faux lines for planks there on this I'm not worried too much because it's small so it can look a little faux-ish as long you know you just want the look and I'm taking some of the pewter gray this time and dry brushing and I'm doing the same technique I did with the birdhouse I'm just kind of you know dirtying it up just a little bit because I like my decor rustic you don't have to do this you can leave it snow white with the planks if you've got a modern farmhouse and you want that look that's also very pretty and crisp and clean looking but I kind of like it a little bit 
rustic and distressed and you know gently antiqued so that's what we're doing now And now I'm just gluing on the carrots. You can certainly stop here because this is definitely a less is more craft. I mean, it looks good just as is. You don't have to go any farther. But when I lifted it up and I was kind of checking it out, I thought, you know, there I am. I'm doing it right there. I want to make a little mini sign for this one too. So see how I'm cutting and I'm deliberately going at angles and kind of turning my scissors there. I'm trying to make a little mini farmhouse sign for this because I thought that would just be so, so cute and it's going to say rabbit eats free because I knew when I moved my tear tray down to my kitchen and I decorate everything I want to sit that little white ceramic bunny next to this sign and I just thought that was such a cute message it's like everyone else has to pay for the you know carrots but the rabbit eats free so anyway you can leave this out if you want I just thought it added so much cuteness to this craft <laughs> This is also found at many Dollar Trees, and this is a super easy DIY. I don't even know if you can technically call this a DIY, but I thought I'd share it with you because, again, this is something when I walk through my Dollar Tree, it just kind of screams tiered tray decor. And there's so many things you can do with this. I mean, you can make these up for Halloween, you can make them up for fall, you can make them up for Christmas. We're making this one up, of course, for Easter and spring season. And we're going to slap some white paint on it because that's the first step there to get it nice, fresh and bright and cheerful for the season. So I removed that little key thing on the top. I am giving it a coat of white primer first and then I give a coat of the acrylic paint after that dries because I don't want it anything to chip off. It is kind of a shiny surface. And now I'm just using a sponge with a little bit of the pavement color again from Apple Barrel and I'm just giving some little accent and dimension and that's it this was a super easy craft it's super fun looks super cute on my tear tray very very classy looking when it's all painted up now the top of it I want to add some spring flowers but I could kind of tell the way the top was with the big hole in it was going to present a little bit of a challenge for gluing flowers on and having them stay there was really no strong surface up there so the solution to that for me because you can see how it's kind of lumpy there it just everything just seemed like it you had to be there I guess but it didn't seem like it would hold things well so I decided to go ahead and take some Dollar Tree jute twine wrap it around a little bit tie it and then that's what I'm gonna glue the floral accents on because they will definitely stay that way so here I go I'm just gonna glue some flowers in pink and yellows and greens and spring colors and that's it that's the extent of this craft you guys and I absolutely love the way that this craft came out For this craft you're going to need some of these wood tags and some printouts of your choice now these are free printables they will be down below in my description box and you're going to cut whatever you choose whatever print that you want to use you're going to cut it out as close as you can to the edges and i'm going to use my glue stick because i have mentioned in previous videos for those of you that have been watching that this works really really well for 
pretty much a guarantee for no wrinkles and no mess ups. And so especially when you're dealing with little tiny petite crafts, you really want something that you know for sure is going to stick. And if, it, if you're wondering if it's sticky, you can see there I'm showing you it's actually sticking to my finger and I'm scared I'm going to tear it. It's a very sticky glue and you get eight to a package for a dollar. You can't beat that. Going on now six weeks with the original craft I did that was huge and it's sticking great. Everything's perfect. So really, really pleased with those Dollar Tree glue sticks. Definitely worth the money. And now I'm taking some burnt umber, just going around the edge to give it a little bit of distressing. And this is a Pinterest inspired craft, I have to be honest. I saw these tags up on Easter tier trays and I thought they were so cute. They didn't look anything like these. These are my own creation, but I just thought the idea of having little tags up there as accent pieces in the tiny little areas on your tier tray would makes such a cute decor piece. Now this little guy is a little too light. I don't know why he didn't print out. So I just take some pencil and just make sure you can see his legs, his arm and give him more definition. And I tie a little gingham bow on the top there for him and a lace bow on the other one. And I'm just using that sponge now to outline their bodies. I decide after I do the bow that they need to pop just a little bit more. But honestly, you guys, I love how these two turned out. <laughs> For this next craft, you're going to need some Dollar Tree wood beads, these little white buckets found in the wedding section, and these sticker letters from the Dollar Tree. So for those of you that were wondering, what do I do with these obnoxiously loud wooden beads? <laughs> because they are super rainbow. I mean, they are so bright. So if you're into like neutral colors or, you know, I think farmhouse even this, you know, the rainbow isn't in, this is a great DIY craft. And again, it was a Pinterest inspired craft. I just saw it. It didn't look just like this. This is my own creation, but she was using the raw wood beads to make a carrot. And I thought, oh my gosh, how cute. So I glued them together. You just pick them out in different sizes and make your little carrot shape and cuticle clippers. Oh my gosh, those are turning out to be a wonderful craft supply, you guys, for snipping off extra hot glue that's hanging over the edge where you don't want it to be seen. Wonderful tool. I use it all the time and I just wanted to mention that in case you guys haven't thought of it. And here in my supply, I have the green twine. I don't know where I got it from. I've had it for years, but it's finally come in handy now for this because I'm going to use this for the top of the carrots. And I'm making a tassel very thin and I'm also tying the bottom of it closer to the top because I don't want too big of a bulge at the bottom there and that's what you end up with but if you don't have green you could just use the brown one from the Dollar Tree and then hit it with a little bit of green paint and a sponge in fact that might even look better because it would have all the character and dimension but you can make it work and this is what we end up with you guys it's super cute so now we need a little place for these carrots to go and that's going to be the bucket but I'm really into the little signs this year for Easter I just think it's so so cute I'm in a cutesy mood so we're making the sign carrots for 25 cents and this burlap here is also found at the Dollar Tree it's in their birthday section their burlap banners they're usually sold all year round at least at my Dollar Tree they are and they are great for crafts if you just want to grab some burlap real quick without having to go into another store and you know cut yardage and pay for it you know it's or order it online really quick way to get some crafting burlap just for little crafts and I'm using the reindeer moss I'm going to sit these guys down into this bucket and this is just a super cute DIY for Easter for a little tiered tray. I love this.
for this craft you're going to need these little wooden squares here and they are sold at the Dollar Tree someone came on and told me that and I also saw it in another video so you can use those this is from my lovely subscriber that has sent me tons of crafts and I do incorporate them whenever I can I can't always say it because I don't want to drive everybody crazy by saying it all the time but I'm so grateful to her and you know who you are thank you so much these little roses there I made those from the same recipe that I used to make wooden beads in my DIY wooden bead video. If you want to know about that video, go check it out. I'll leave the link in the description box. But I had some left and I rolled it up and made roses for spring. And then this is a sign that is a free printable. It will be down below my description box. And here's where I get really annoyed, you guys. My camera battery ran out while I was filming how, you know, I just glued it on, but I made the frame using hot glue and I'm showing you now really slowly because you can figure it out what I did I just went and put lines going down and created like a faux wood grain this only works on really small petite signs it just gives it character and some um, 3d effect for frames I wouldn't I tried it on a bigger sign once and it just looked not 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 good but for little signs like this it's a fun quick cheap way to get a frame on it and you know it takes seconds to do and you can do whatever designs you want if you want your frame to have little curly cubes or little dots maybe like little beads but it's just a fast quick way and I often forget about it but I didn't want to cut craft sticks I just wanted it to have some texture turns out when I put that burnt umber on it was a little too dark so I put a little bit of the country tan on by apple barrel just to kind of soften that up and I go back over it with white and then I decide you know that looks too light so you can actually see me bring out the definition again because I'm losing the definition of the frame but before I do that I take a little bit of pink paint and I'm just sponging just the tips of those roses I did paint them white a lot of people ask me if they can paint those beads you can with acrylic paint I've never used any other kind of paint so I can't vouch I've never colored them well actually I did use some um, iron oxides once they're dry powders and that colored them but the colors were so pastel that I wasn't happy with the outcome so I always end up painting them with acrylic paint now I'm just adding a little burnt umber back into the frame there to give it some dimension and I also hit the roses a little bit to distress them and antique them those roses are what make this craft I don't know if the camera's going to do it justice but they just are so gorgeous the 3d effect and I just think they look so pretty at the top but this is what we end up with when we're all done <laughs> For this craft I'm using a hula skirt from the Dollar Tree but if you have some raffia you can use that too and a mayonnaise a lid any lid you can find like this you just need some kind of shape and I'm gonna go ahead and paint this lid brown using my favorite color you guys I talk about it all the time the burnt umber from Apple Barrel but I just love this color I think it's an all-around color and it works you know it's just very versatile and I'm just sponging it on because I want to tone the white down just a little bit. And now I'm going to start cutting long strands of the raffia up. And you're going to see me take sections of it like this and twist it and start creating a bird nest. Now, if you happen to have Spanish moss at your Dollar Tree, one, I'm totally jealous, and two, use that because that would be a lot easier. But if you don't, uh, this is a great DIY to show you guys how to improvise, which is pretty much what I had to do my whole life. I was crafting way before there were Dollar Tree crafts, Dollar Tree videos, before there was YouTube. I also lived up in the mountains where there just weren't a lot of store choices. So even though they had just built a 99 cent only store down the mountain, I just didn't have access to it. We would get snowed in and, you know, I just pretty much for a decade there had to improvise that was like the story of my life a lot of you guys ask me how do you think of these things and I think that really is the ticket there when you're cornered you know kind of backed into a corner and you have no choice and you want beautiful home decor you would be surprised at what you start looking at and thinking about you know how can I make this work so 
my mother-in-law told me about a hot glue gun and when I discovered that it was just sky's the limit I had so much fun I bought my first little glue gun and it was like completely thrashed within like a year after I used it because I loved my hot glue gun so anyway I found out while I was doing this craft it was easier to tie a knot and then glue it down so that it doesn't come apart while you're pulling and twisting and you're just going to see me twist and keep wrapping this around and around to create the bottom and the sides and create a little bird nest When you finally get to this point there, it's a, it's a good start, it's a good frame, but I wanted it to have that look. You know, it kind of has that, I, I still want, I was after that Spanish moss look, so I took this straw, I think it was Easter straw I got for Easter basket, I honestly don't remember where I got this straw, but I knew I had it, and I also knew it wasn't the right color, I didn't want to move too far into fall. So you're going to see me glue this straw down, I'm just patient, I keep breaking it in little pieces, I keep putting hot glue on this nest, and rolling it around, you'll see me put hot glue here, and then I kind of roll it down on the broken pieces there, and you just, you know, I'm, I'm watching a fun movie there. I'm having fun. So I'm just enjoying myself crafting. It's fun. And, you know, it was a little time consuming, but it was fun. And I was pleased with the results when we were done. But of course, it's not the right color. So what do I do? I take my favorite paint, Burnt Umber, add a little tiny bit of black because I want that color kind of of a Spanish moss. And I just start going for it. I just start tapping it with a brush, tapping it with a brush. And it's very very messy I'm using my fingers and hands they get covered in paint and so I actually pick it up and that helps um, put more paint on it I guess and then I take a little territorial beige and go over it because I'm just trying you know I'm trying to think of what a real bird nest looks like and what I'm trying to create there and I'm really close I'm really happy with it this is what we get the next morning when it dries and I have an old bag of this moss but it's all just broken little bits it's not good enough to create the whole nest and I don't have enough of it so that's why I had to do the straw but I realize the border you know if I put it on the border it will give it exactly that missing touch and it works really really well look at this you guys we have a nest and i love this all we do is add some eggs and we're good to go For this next craft, you'll need some reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree, some craft sticks, and a box, any old box, some little eggs of your choosing, and some pretty napkins of your choosing as well. And last but not least, these are the cheap nasty eggs I got at the Dollar Tree last year before they were selling the carton ones that they probably still, they probably have the Easter stuff out now at my Dollar Tree. But to be honest, I had so many good ideas ready to go and I had enough craft supplies I didn't even go check. But I start off with these eggs here and I take my cuticle clippers. I clip off any kind of edges that are jutting out a little bit too much. I use my hot glue on the inside to close these eggs up so I don't have to worry about them opening while I'm working with them. But I showed you how they had holes in them which freaked me out and then I realized look how handy they come in. I'm gonna take these outside and spray paint and I use some, some foam that I got from a package that was mailed to me some skewer sticks I poke those little babies up into the holes on the eggs take them outside spray paint and everything's great so I'm just using Mod Podge with a little bit of water here and I'm gonna start to apply those flowered napkins next I'm taking a color I mixed up with a little bit of blue and gray to create the egg colors I want to do you know they're very on trend right now the brown and blue eggs I want to create those and I happen to love the way these 
these Dollar Tree foam eggs look when you paint them, the rough texture, I think they are so, so pretty. So everything that I just did with the eggs now is drying and I decide, of course, we need a little wooden crate, like a little farmhouse crate, to stick all these pretty things in on the tiered tray. You know, I just, I didn't want to put them on grass. So I'm just taking this box here and I'm going to go about covering it, the whole thing with craft sticks. So I invite you to follow me on Instagram and on Pinterest. You can reach me there. But I really want to talk about Pinterest real quick because I have a lot of new subscribers who may not be aware that I created a board for my subscribers crafts. I absolutely love to see your crafts just like I love to craft. I love to appreciate what you guys do, especially if I've inspired you and you make something that I made or a version of it or just something that I made inspired you to craft something else. I love to see it. And a lot of people ask me, you know, how do I share my photo with you? So you go to Pinterest, you create an account, and you upload your photo as a pin. And over there on Pinterest, you can private message people. So you just send your pin to me in the email and I will get it and then share it to that board with your name. And we have some absolutely fabulous crafts. I mean, the page is huge now since I started. So I just wanted to create a place where we can also share your creativity with the world. And when I put it up on my Pinterest, it kind of helps get it out there so the whole world can enjoy your gift too. So make sure you send me your crafts, you guys. I love to see them. I am getting a lot of email now, so I'm kind of falling behind. I'm doing the best I can. If I don't get back to you right away, please don't get hurt or offended. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Just leave it sitting there because I go through my emails when I can, and I love to see your crafts. So please go check out that you know what we have so far over there on Pinterest. Go check out everybody's crafts. We've got some very talented people and some absolutely beautiful crafts up there. And here you saw me using some spackling just to fill in the edges. When you're all done covering these boards, you know, I was squeezing the craft sticks together so you couldn't see the cardboard at the top. And that created some tiny little gaps at the bottom. No big deal. A little bit of spackling and it was gone. Painted it white. And now we're just putting our pretty little eggs in. And this is it. For this craft, you'll need this free printable, which is also down below in my description box. And I'm using the like layer of white napkin that was left over after I peeled them apart. You know how those printed napkins have two layers to them? And I'm going to just add again a little bit of Mod Podge and water for this craft. I'm showing you approximately you know, how much water I added. Mix it up really, really well because I have kind of an, a vision with this craft. I saw some eggs on Pottery Barn just laying on a table. It was like staged with another craft, but I wasn't looking at the main craft. I was looking at the eggs going, ooh, what are those? Those are cool looking. They almost looked like they had like wrinkles in them and they had a bunch of texture and dimension and really primitive and rustic looking. I really liked it. So I had an idea and it turned out really good, but this is how I go about doing my egg. Their eggs might have been wood, I'm not sure, but my eggs are going to be Mod Podged and decoupaged with napkins. So I'm putting layers and layers of torn napkin on here and I'm kind of using my fingers on purpose to squeeze and wiggle the napkin and press to make sure that it gets lines and textures in it. I don't want it smooth and I'm tapping with the sponge to get that effect. And then I cut out, you know, I didn't cut all of them out, but I chose my favorites off of those stickers. They're all beautiful, actually. I had a really hard time choosing, but these are the three that I chose. And I'm going to Mod Podge those on the front as well. And this is what we have the next day. Now, I decide to paint these snow white because I have a very, very specific look that I want. I mean, you could leave them... I had a little bit of shadow under there because I had decoupaged some of the roses on there by accident on one of the edges. And so I had to paint this guy and then I thought, ooh, that looks really good. And you know what else it did? 
the paint's thick so it made the bunnies actually kind of sit back and become level with the surface of the egg they didn't look like they were I don't know if that makes sense but the napkin was thinner and the paper was thicker and once I painted them they were all the same level which looked really really nice so now I'm taking a little territorial beige and I'm just gonna dry brush them that's it and then take some burnt umber go around and give them a little frame but I'm going for the French country look I absolutely love French country it kind of crosses over to shabby chic a little bit but especially around Easter time I am such a sucker for that but I have to make it tie in with the rest of my farmhouse decor and these eggs worked perfectly for my tiered tray I absolutely love them I always ask you guys to pick a favorite and some of you were saying I don't want to pick them if you like them all oh my gosh I love you <laughs> you can tell me you love all my DIYs I love to hear that but if you have some favorites I love to hear that too I just love to hear feedback from you guys I love you guys so much thank you for your support and your love I appreciate it more than I can say so now I'm taking some Dollar Tree rounds right there and I'm just gluing them on those are their little stands and platforms and we're all done <laughs> If you had fun today don't forget to give me a big thumbs up comment share the video it really does help me thank you so much and don't forget to go check out part two with my very sweet friend Jackie at Bless Beyond Measure she has some more beautiful DIYs to share with you today and of course as always until my next video breathe deep fret not and do things that make you happy <laughs> Thank you.